What up my freaks, Ruinous and Sight here with part 4 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Krokgar campaign. So as we saw last time, Krokgar moved to the territories of Clan Morbidus, destroying them and taking the Temple Avenue of Gold. Unfortunately, Teclis did manage to take the Caverns of Sotek for the Order of Lore Masters, but a single settlement isn't a big deal, and I do think that if we maintain an alliance, we should be at some point able to pay him in order to uh, get this and max out the province. Especially since this does have exotic animals as well, which would be nice as we do want the extra trade. Anyway, in terms of what we gotta do this turn, we have looped back around and are turning northward towards the court of Libara, so we've got Tomb Kings in our sights. Probably a couple turns to get there, but we are getting there, and we will also be using some Chameleon Stalkers and Skinks when we do, which should be a pretty fun time. There were some comments about getting Source, and yes, of course we will get Source. The, uh, the main army is only holding the Skinks for now, in the sense that Krogar is probably not going to have them in his army, he'll trade them off, um, but I don't see any point in building Saurus until the uh, third tier building is available, mostly because we want the shielded Saurus, as they are relatively low armor and do want the extra missile resistance uh, that that offers, or the uh, sh missile block, or rather. And considering the cost of getting regular Saurus units, I don't feel there's a need to get ones that would inevitably be replaced, uh, just because of the investment. Anyway, in terms of what we gotta do this turn, there's probably not that much golden pass. Yeah, there's no buildings to build. The Temple Avenue of Gold is not going to collect income as yet because it needs the extra public order for a while. What we might want to do, though, is briefly switch to the alignment of crafting here, however, for the extra casualty replenishment rate. Hopefully it activates... Actually, it won't activate now, will it? No, it actually depends on if Crocky stays here for a turn, and if he does, then it will, so... Yeah, okay. We can still do it. And get a little bit. Now, I did want to double check diplomacy before we end the turn, and I do believe. I yes, Iron Brows Expedition, you're ready for a trade agreement. Will and you're willing to give us some money for it. Binding. Enduring. Yeah, you sure about that? I've been betrayed by dwarfs before. Granted, not by Iron Brows Expedition, but rather the worst faction in the game, aka the Greybeard's Prospectors. Uh, propose offer. And, oh, huh. Once we did that, you're willing to go non aggression. Well, that's just swell. Give us more money while you're at it. Lovely. Now we just need that defensive alliance, and we can start accumulating allegiance and thus access to dwarven troops. More importantly, this gives us the opportunity to. Oh. They don't want a non-aggression pack. Damn. Really? That's surprising. At point four, they'd want more than a thousand gold for that. Hmm, and next turn they'll probably want more because they'll like us even less. I'm just wondering if there's something we could cancel here. Something simple. But it doesn't look like it. Hmm, is there any way to acquire a little bit more cash? You're not at war with anybody. You're actually willing to go defensive alliance, but we can't do that right now because that wouldn't be good for us as it would find Kairos. We could declare war on Zlatlan, I guess. Even though they like us. Hmm. What was it again? I remember we checked this last time, but we didn't need the money as bad. 400 money, that might still not be enough to get a, a non-aggression pack for the Orion's camp. Let's see. Offer payment, if we give you all of our money, we're down to 0 0.2 only. Yeah, so we need like another 600 or so, at least. Possibly a full 800, depending on how it's rounding. Which means there's no point in doing that. Alrighty, well then, we can get the next research going, which will be the tab, or the sequence, rather, of spawning. Because we really need the extra growth. And then we'll go sequence of stoicism for the control right after. Sequence of coexistence. And sequence of marching. Basically, we'll be in the tablet of order for a while. Unless we want to take a quick tablet of something else. I do like the sequence of logistics. Upkeep minus 5%. But I feel like early economy growth is also more important. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to keep doing this for now unless I change my mind or somebody convinces me to do so. Anyway, other than that, I believe we're ready to end the turn. So let's end it. Let's head to the towards those Tomb Kings with some new units in tow. Is she going to declare war on us? Ah, okay. Well, isn't that just lovely? <laughs> we were planning to do that. I guess she knows what's coming.
And, ooh, Fort of Libaras just took out, I think they just took another territory. What do we have here? Granite Massive, yeah, that belonged to Thoric. Oh, interesting. Maybe we'll meet Kalita in battle sooner than I thought. But that's obviously a good thing. And Thorak would probably enjoy the fact that we're uh, fighting his enemies, and ooh, we could probably trade him Granite Massive as it is a mountain territory, if we really wanted to, and he'd probably really appreciate it as well. Also, you guys, just out of curiosity, minus 0.4, right? 1,500 money. It's a little bit steep, I gotta say, and they're not at war with anybody, so we can't ask to join war. I think I'm gonna hold off on that one for now. Alrighty, what do we build then? Well, first of all, I guess we get Krogar moving uh, in, let's say, channeling stance right to the edge of this territory so we can stay in our own. Like so. Go, go, go. I don't see any Tomb Kings there. Then what we'll do is put Kanos here into an camp stance right here. Right here, I should say. And then... We're going to have him trade these units. Oh, is he just out of range? Okay, Crocky, move here. Yeah. Go here. I guess I could have traded them to a chameleon instead, but whatever. Uh, we'll trade you these. We'll take one of these king cohorts. In actuality, well, actually, it depends on whether we need to move this turn or not. Do that, then I recruit three more chameleon skinks. Like so. We'll trade those to Crocky, and that'll be sufficient. You, chameleon, are also going to march up in march stance, mind you. Right up here. Maybe we can have you attack Resetra while Krokgar maintains movement range. We'll see. It really depends. Alright, well, we got three... We actually got three perfect spawn here now. Two lords and one hero. And we just gotta get more. I really feel like Krokgar should also have the perfect spawn trait. Or should acquire it by level or something. Now I feel like he's left out. Alrighty, well that's good enough. I believe there is no diplomacy to do this turn, I take it. Uh, no, n Still tempted to join the war with Talakwa, but no. Alright. Here we go again. Easy little turn. And then I gotta remember as soon as this turn ends to turn our, uh... Uh, to turn our commandment back to what it was. Aha, King Agatep has moved to Resetra, or has appeared at Resetra. But I don't see Kalita, and I certainly don't see a full stack. It's also interesting that she decided to take Thorax territory rather than going after the... Uh, mm, I don't want to piss off tic tac -toe. Uh Rather than going after the Silver Pinnacle, or not the Silver Pinnacle, Lamia. It's a little strange. The Silver Host still occupying Lamia, her main territory. Oh, wow. We just built a bunch of Chameleon Skinks, and now we get Blessed Chameleon Skink Mission. <laughs> That's pretty funny, but oh well. Uh, you cannot reach Resetra, can you? You can. All right, perfect. Absolutely perfect. So here's what we do. First of all, you are going to go into Battle March just for a second, and so are you. You, Chameleon... Mm, let's get you, I guess Obedience brings victory. You're going to move to Resetra. Like so. I don't see the Tomb King army. Yes, the size of defeat, one versus like all of them. I know, I know, again, don't you worry. And then, we're going to take Krogar, and we're going to give him these units. I guess we could give him one, the units once he moves. Just in case, yeah, because he has the better movement range. Alright, do this right here. And then you're gonna move in March Dance. <laughs> oh, all of these guys moving together. Alright, and then you're gonna trade him to Krokgar. And then I guess we'll give the rest of the Chameleon Skinks to one of our other lords because, well, we'll put the Blessed Ones in Krokgar's army. And you're gonna lose these three for three. Nice. And then you're going to keep hold of those skinks. Do we have anything to spend money on? Well, actually, this should be auto-resolvable. Uh, yes. No, it didn't draw out the other army. Wait. Can you go a little bit further? Yes, you can. Might as well help out and leech a little bit of XP. Now, like so. Auto-resolve. Nobody dies, right? Right? Okay. Okay. I get screwed over like the poor Doom Wheels in my uh, Clan Scryer campaign. All right, and we will occupy. Nice. Uh, Featherfoe Torque. 
useless for now. I mean, I guess these guys could have carry and attack us, in theory, but somewhat useless. Uh, alignment to monuments for you, construction costs, there we go. We can upgrade this, but I'm not sure that there aren't better options right now. Uh, jungles of the Gods, ah yes, so... Here, we are going to immediately build that gold mine, and we may as well build the insect breeding farm. Are we able to collect income? Yes, yeah, sort of. Do we have provincial instability here still? No, we do not. And also, 220 income per turn isn't all that much. Let's wait until the gold mine's level 2, and then we can start collecting. Honestly, we should probably replace the old one monument. We should swap these around, but we'll wait until Sotek's trail, I keep wanting to say tail, is tier 3. You are good as you are for now. Your growth is garbage, but it'll... It'll rise. And I guess everything else is fine as it is in its current commandments. Hmm, you know what, let's get this as well. Not like we're spending any cash right now, anyway. And we can hold off on the skill points because there's nothing else to do. New turn means once again we check diplomacy. Aha! Moment of Orion, you're ready for a non-aggression pack. Let's do that. And let's do that. Of course. All right, now our relationship is rising positive. Yes. Hopefully we don't have to fight. And it looks like Talakwa is indeed going to destroy Zalatlan. Just out of curiosity, non-aggression fact will give us a thousand gold. Granted, this will piss off Talakwa to some degree. Maybe it's worth it now. Wait, how much do they like us? Mm, no, actually not that much. How much would you give us to join the war again? 0 0.2, so basically nothing at this point. Yeah, well, how was I to know that they would be destroyed this soon? I guess we'll just ignore them for now. Oh, let's not piss off Delacqua. And we gotta be friends. And if anything, we want them to join our war against somebody else. Would you fight against the Court of Libaros? Not for free. But once the, uh, well, once the Zalatlan is dead, they probably would be willing. And the turn for now, let's find a proper Tinking stack. Where is their stack, is the question. They took Granite Massive. Hmm. I gotta keep an eye on Doomglade as they could rebuild there. I doubt that they can take the Temple of Skulls. At least not without Kalita's main stack. I guess that's a little bit of game theory as to where exactly they went. Whether they went up to the Silver Host, whether they went towards Karagorud. Really, the AI should be programmed to try to take Lamia, but... It hasn't been. Alright, well, I guess we could use one of these armies to scout. Can Krokar, he can reach either Mahrak or, ooh, I should have taken him out of uh, Battle March stance, that's my bad, but uh, he can reach Mahrak, I think, nope, he's just short of it. What about you, Chameleon? You can also not reach it. Alright. Hmm. Alright, so here's what we'll do. We'll put you into Granite Massive. We'll see if we can sight an army. Ah, no, I see Kalita, and... Oh, hello. She is... Whoa, 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 whoa. It's, what's happening here? One second. She is under siege at Mahrak by Thorek. Well, that's interesting. Perhaps even more interesting. I do have to wonder whether she'll lose or win, though. Hmm. Okay. Well, then. Chameleon, I want you to move... Well, there's no way that you can take Doomglade. At least I sincerely doubt it. Not a lot there, though. Two perfect spawn and four skinks, eh? Hmm. Is there an army there? There is an army being built there. What's the garrison like? They have a Screaming Skull Catapult, a bunch of regular skeleton warriors. I gotta say, I'm kind of tempted to try. You know what? I think we're gonna try. We can't do it this turn, of course. My next turn. All right, you're gonna go into encamp stance, or actually, wait, just just move in regular stance. Wait, you can recruit in non encamp stance. So go here. And it really depends on how many units these guys are able to raise. And you go here. I guess we won't be leeching XP at uh, Grand and Massive this time, but that's fine. And get a couple more scale. Oh, Eight hundred though. Maybe we can do without. Wait. Blessed Chameleon Skinks, current total 15 out of 250. Damn, I was hoping we could get those. All right, fine. Let's get you into Astromancy. Let's you get into Ast Astromancy as well. You don't have a caster, unfortunately. Do not betray your I don't raise anything crazy. Hmm. We'll see. 
Either way, Crocky, you are going to take Grand and Massive. I think this should be auto-resolvable. And there we go, we'll occupy the place. And if we need to, we can trade it back to Thorak. Uh, yeah, you can collect income for now as well, just for that little bit extra. And then you can head out of here and you can go back into this stance to get your magic back up. Ooh, but you won't heal this way. Although your heal's so slight like this, that's still a little bit of healing. We need our Steg healed up to max, that's what we need. I guess the worst thing that could happen is Kalita wins the siege and then attacks these two, although I'm not actually sure that she's in range or not. I guess we'll find out. And we did switch you back to the Alignment of Monuments, so everything else looks good to me. Let's end the turn, and let's see what happens here. Whoa, 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 what is this? Vashnar. Not of Vashnar's conquest fame, but rather a different Vashnar. Yeah, okay, these guys built up a lot of units. Okay, I guess these guys uh, need troops in order to be able to win this. Alright, that's fine. We can march stands Krokgar over there. And honestly, even if Kalita wins and takes out Granite Massive, we don't really care about that right now anyway. I'm a little bit concerned. Oh, Zatlan was destroyed. Yeah, I should have joined the war against them, just like Arachnos. Oh, well. Uh, Kroki. Oh, you can't actually march stands that far. Well, isn't that a shame? Alright, I guess you're going to go here. Hmm. Wait. You're gonna go here. Instead. Like so. And then we're gonna put you into ambush stance. And we're gonna keep these two where they are. You can both be an astromancy, I guess. Yeah, that's fine. If Vashnar decides to attack us, and how the heck is he here? He wandered across all of this through Clan Moore's territory to try to go after who? Who's he even at war with? Who are you at war with? You're at war with Thorak, you're at war with Camry, you're at war with Lots. Are you sure you want to be fighting us right now, buddy? This seems like a bad idea. Honestly, if he moves here, we might attack him just to destroy the extra little army. I'm sure other factions would like it. Speaking of other factions, you. Yes, for free. Beautiful. And this will increase our relationship with them, and hopefully we can get a trade agreement going soon with Talakwa. Everything else is ignorable, I believe. Yes. And unless there's buildings to build, we end another turn. Damn. Lots of turns going by, but at the very least our empire is building up right now, which is gonna be very useful when we get more troop variety out of it. Serpent Coast is almost ready, so yeah, we're gonna need every penny that we just got. End the turn. All right, let's see. Huh? Somebody won a fight here. I'm not. Uh, I'm not entirely sure who was fighting who. And these guys got a full stack now, so at least that's something for Crocky to do. And looks like Mahrak has fallen to Thorak. All right, that's actually a good thing because if he takes Libaras or if he takes the uh, or if he takes Lamia, we can trade him back the Granite Massive for that to complete his province. Alrighty, ambush foiled Krogar. Well, that's unfortunate. The Age of Rage. Ain't it always the Age of Rage? Uh, what do we have at the Doomglade? Is it a... It's a field battle. So we can either draw them out if we wanted to. So I'm not entirely sure that there would be all that much benefit to it. Actually, there would be some benefit. Um, because the Screaming Skull Catapults would be slow. Just really depends on if this guy tries to run away or actually fight. I guess we're about to find out. You, here in Astromancy. Uh, you here in Astromancy. Well, I guess you should probably switch to Battle March at least. Well, really need to. Can we switch back? It's not going to make that much of a difference. And then Crocky, you're going to attack after we level you up. Uh, let's get you another point in, I want to say, Harmonic Convergence. And we'll do Uranons afterwards. Alrighty, and then lastly, you, Pradot. Let's get you thick skin, then let's get you foe seeker, and then keep moving through that tree. Here we go. Try King Karus first, and if that fails, then go directly for Doomglade. King Karus will run, which means Doomglade is the way to go. A little bit unfortunate, but we can send one of the perfect spawn to hunt him down. All right. Lovely. I like the fact that we'll have all these Saurus on the field at once. I mean, Saurus Lords and Heroes. A close victory, apparently. They do have quite a few Screaming Skull Catapults. Uh, but fortunately for us, we do have quite a few Chameleon Skinks and Stalkers to take care of those. Here we go.
Alrighty, Crocky and his Sora Scar veteran Pradot are now both on those cold ones, so they can both move fast, which I'm pretty happy about. And ooh, I just want to take a look at your shield here. Looks pretty nice. It actually reminds me of the vampire shields, which also have the same kind of form, but obviously are uh, completely metallic and uh, all vampire-y, but the same form. Rocky doesn't need a shield, he can just bat things away with his arm, although this thing on his arm I guess might function as a uh, sort of shield or just a sort of stabby portion of the arm. We just assume that everything's stabby. I mean, he's got a lot of extra stab capabilities all over him. But anyway, here we go. Now, the enemy arrayed before us is a pretty darn big Tomb King's army. A full stack, plus the garrison as well. Four full units of Screaming Skull Catapults. Some carrion for support. A very solid number of chariots, like five or six of them, six in fact, as well as a couple of units of the Hekar Horsemen, so as far as early game stacks go, pretty nice and pretty balanced. I see a Tomb Guard unit in there as well with halberds, we'll have to watch out for. But we do have our own new additions to the forces like the Chameleon Skinks and Stalkers as well. Speaking of them, they are going to be stalking all the way around, moving through the jungles and then looping around to try to take out those Screaming Skull Catapults before they can do too much damage. We also are going to wait for our reinforcements to arrive because if we have three perfect spawn to fight with Crocky, uh, then we may as well make use of them. Granted, Chameleon and Kanoskir are going to take a while to get to us as they are obviously not on mounts like these two are, so they're going to have to walk the long way around, but you know, an extra few seconds of waiting isn't going to hurt and will very much be helpful. With four of these units fighting together, I don't think the enemy could do anything about it. Uh, the three, of course, healing and then Crocker has his buffs, so they could protect each other and guard each other's backs as long as their animations don't take them uh, too far out of the fight. Alright, and they're very, very slowly walking up. 35 speed only, man. Soros are extremely soft, but at least they're faster than the dead. Nehekar Fourier's move at 28, and they're reasonably fast, I think. Well, actually, the Skeleton Archers move at 32. Not too bad. Tomb Guard move at 28 as well, huh? Huh. You know, I would have thought that the uh, Nehekar Warriors would move a little bit faster than the Tomb Guard, just by virtue of being slightly less armored. But perhaps not. They do have a second sword to carry on. Anyway, here we go. Finally, we're starting this off. The enemy is going to get those Screaming Skull Catapults firing, but we are going to move in in the shadow of this jungle. So a decent amount of the shots from the Screaming Skull Catapults are actually just going to smash into the trees and just like that one and disappear. The rest of our forces will hopefully move up relatively unharmed. We also have our stalking unit of uh, Blessed Source Warriors that's going to move forward and hopefully... Uh, and hopefully help out Crocky and the rest quite soon. Also, I just noticed that basically all of those shots from those Screaming Skull Catapults were wasted into the trees. Only one out of at least eight that were fired. Beautiful. Alrighty, in the meantime, these two are fighting all that they can. Here's Skeleton Warriors and Carrion and whatever else the enemy has brought to bear. And here come the other perfect spawn to help this out. Look at them fighting together. I bet uh, Krokar is probably reminded of his uh, of his fight after the fall of Shotel for like 300 years with the dwindling remnants of the uh, defenders. Anyway, here come our blessed Source Warriors to help out and add the bleed effect and also their general strength to this little fight. In the meantime, while this is happening, the rest of our army is approaching and is splitting off into various... Oh, wow. Look at all those Screaming Skulls, they're all trying to target our Blessed Croxies, that's interesting, and completely a waste of time. Um, but, uh, well, good luck to them, I suppose. Yeah, the rest of our army is splitting off, we're gonna get the Red Crests and the Chameleon Skinks over on this side, together with the help of the Saurus Spears to protect them from the Cav and the Archers, while the Chameleon Stalkers are also nearly here, together with the Cold One Spear Riders and the Chameleon Skinks, who are going to go after these Screaming Skulls. In the meantime, the enemy is quite distracted fighting our units of Saurus here together, led uh, by the Scarvet and the, uh, well, the various Saurus Lords. 
and we're keeping the vast majority of the enemy penned in here. And there we go, the precursor weapons from the Chameleon Skinks fire as they move in and start ripping those Screaming Skull catapults apart. And there we go, perfect timing as this is just when our army comes out of the trees and joins the rest of the fray. Here come our Blessed Croxidors together with our Stegadon. We're also going to now pop the spell. I've been waiting to pop the... Uh, uh, to start uh, spamming the spells, because I didn't want to do it while just our heroes and lords were there, because it would have felt a little bit cheap, but now we're able to do whatever we want. There we go. Looks like the enemy's already activated its first level of Realm of Souls, but whether that helps it out all that much remains to be seen. An Urnan's Thunderbolt coming down from a clear, well, not blue sky, but uh, night sky. And there we go. Teto Echo predicts your death. Or your true death, I suppose, as we are fighting the dead here. But there we are. Looks like the enemy main line is getting absolutely crushed. We can see our own HP is looking pretty good, whereas theirs is very much dwindling. I do believe the enemy is also about to activate their third tier of the Realm of Souls, so we do have to watch out for the Ushabti spawn. Over on the side, it looks like we are trying to avoid taking too much damage from the enemy's skeleton chariots and the Hekar horsemen, though the latter did fail by virtue of getting engaged by the Saurus spears who ripped them apart with their anti-large. These Screaming Skull Catapults have also been by and large destroyed by our units of uh, uh, Chameleon Stalkers who are now just going to run away so that they don't directly fight the Tomb Guard with Halberds here as we don't want to get into a... Uh, we don't want to get bogged down in a fight with those guys. The Chameleon Skinks should take care of the last Screaming Skull Catapult and can also move forward and start fighting those archers as they should win any engagement in range against the basic uh, range unit. Looks like the shop here about to spawn as well. Here they are. From that third tier of the Realm of Souls, but whether that's going to be enough remains to be seen. We do still have our Saurus with Spears gear and a decent amount of Chameleon Skinks and regular Skinks as well, all of which are going to immediately start focusing down those Ushabti. And there we go, and poisoning them as well. And then, of course, our Cold One Spear Riders are riding around trying to catch the enemy chariots, as it is generally a pretty bad matchup to be the chariot fighting the cavalry. It well, looks like our chameleon, or these are actually red crests, are holding off the uh, uh, the tomb guard here and are going to hold them off for a little while longer. And then the chameleon stalkers are going to move in and hit them in the side, slashing them back. The chameleon skinks are having a shootout with the uh, with the skeleton spears over on this side, shooting from out of the jungle, mind you and are actually ripping them apart quite handily. We're losing a little bit of HP on these units, but they barely lost any models whatsoever, whereas the enemy are base have basically lost one unit and are about to lose the second as well. Alright, very nice Chameleon Skinks. Too bad we couldn't get them to uh, force the enemy to chase them around, as they're pretty great at that, but next time around, I'm sure. Otherwise, the bounce of power is about 75% in our favor. The enemy lord has fallen to the piles of Saurus Old Bloods here, and Kroggar has actually left them to kill the enemy Tomb King, while he has moved towards the Tomb Guard and the last remaining little contingent of the enemy uh, that are still any kind of threat. Looks like the Ushabti are also starting to melt away. They're crumbling under the sustained fire from all of our uh, chameleon skinks as well as the javelineers chucking javelins into their backs as well as those of the chariots and very nice and our cold one spear riders with their anti-large are holding them off and allowing our chameleon stalkers to escape lest they take too much damage the last of the Ushabti crumble away and it looks like it's just the tomb guard left in small numbers and I can see them crumbling and healing at the same time, so the battle should be just about ours. A really fun fight, though. Sometimes fighting the Tomb Kings is almost like fighting the Skaven in a way, because they bring just so many numbers, or they have such uh, uh, large numbers of units in their fights, especially in the early game, which makes it really fun. I enjoy fighting both of the factions. Facing off against hordes of enemies is always pretty great. Alrighty, and there we go, the last of the Tomb Guard fall, and that is that for the enemy army. Everybody did pretty darn well, and we avoided so much damage from those four Screaming Skull Catapults uh, that we got a heroic victory. The odd resolve probably uh, uh, very much, well, not overestimated, but it surely 
ac well, at least, I don't know about accurate, but it surely estimated the, uh, uh, the use of the Screaming Skull catapults and thinking that they would do a ton of damage, but they ended up doing very little, and thus we came out very much ahead. Alrighty, a nice heroic victory for Karaki, and a nice battle it was. I uh, do think that most of our units got to play around. Look at the damage on our unit of Blessed Saurus with Bleed, 54k. Uh, even more than our Skink Priest, and more than anybody by the looks of it. Also, I really enjoyed all the, uh, uh, all the Saurus, Old Bloods, and Scarvets fighting together with Karak. And that was quite lovely, and hopefully we'll be seeing more of that in the future as well. We got about 10% losses, and that's about where you want to be. Still a little bit of damage on our poor skinks, and one of our units of skink cohorts did suffer, but, you know, not a big deal there. We're going to occupy the Doomblade for ourselves, of course. And leadership on fighting the Tomb Kings, that'll help. An armor of silvered steel and a sword of might and a sword of... Wow, okay. Get all the items then. And hey, Crocky's got a horned one. It may not yet be the... Uh, uh, it may not be the Grimlock. The Grimlock? Well, I guess it is a the Grimlock. Uh, Grimlock, but it's still pretty good. Now, we also have a successful mission which is three blessed chameleon skinks, which is nice. Let's give this a quick read. Though the Lord of Strength, the old one, Tzkatli, does not perceive this portent solely as raw vigor, but recognizes economic strength as well. The storm that rages over the gold mines are a sure sign that he requires the cohorts to build their wealth. Should the gold be accrued, a sacred spawning will surely follow. How did the bat? What did the battle captives have to do with gold? Huh. It feels like this is a description for, like, get money and then you're good. Uh, but oh well. Not a big deal. Just out of curiosity. What do these guys do that's different from the regular Chameleon Skinks? Uh, they have a little bit of extra ammunition by the looks of it. They also have physical resistance. In which the regular ones don't by nine. Alright. So a little bit more resistant to stuff. Also more expensive, but you know that's hardly uh, that's hardly surprising. Sadly, their missile strength isn't any more, but nonetheless, I love chameleon skinks too much not to use them. So we will be using them. Although, how many in this army and how many in other armies also remains to be seen. Now, you guys, you need to make sure that you're close. But uh, yeah, so you're close to Croc if you get attacked, basically. Hmm. Wait, Croc, how much do you heal here? Eh, quite a bit. Yeah, fine. We'll leave him in there, even though it costs extra. Well, I guess it doesn't, because the, uh... We do counteract it by being garrisoned, so yeah, you might as well heal. Alrighty, and if you were to suddenly attack us here, I'm pretty sure... Yeah. There is no Skaven to suddenly ambush and kill those, so we're fine. Alamia actually looks pretty well defended as well now. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Doomglade has Fire Leech Bolas. I think I've said this before, but I absolutely love Fire Leech Bolas. Damn, they're one of my favorite units in the game. They're just so fun. We gotta get some Fire Leech Bolas. Uh, Alright, looks like you, Kanos Kier. Ow, oh, you can't reach Crocky? Ow, oh, you gotta be kidding me. Alright, fine. Chameleon, you do it. You're gonna take, let's say, two Skink Cohorts. We can recruit... Well, actually, we can recruit three Fire Leeches. Three it is. Uh, well, we'll actually see how much money we have remaining after we spend it, but nonetheless. Uh, Croxagore Labor District. We can hold off on the meat storage hall, but we cannot hold off on the totems of Qu Nope, on the Old One Monument, rather, because we need public order here. And what about the Jungles of the Gods? We can upgrade the Gold Mine, which we shall do. And yeah, by the looks of it... Hmm... We either spend all the money, or we recruit a couple units of Fire Leech Bolas. Let's do two Fire Leech Bolas. Alright. And we can also get rid of some of the skin cohorts that are following around, but they're so cheap that it also doesn't feel that needed. Plus, it is nice that we can put them somewhere to act as a... Uh, uh, act as a little garrison as well. Also, by the looks of it, Kalita's done. 
We didn't fight her for very long, but we do have Clan Moors and their capital right here in Misty Mountain, which we're very close by to. Uh, I just hope that Thoric isn't capable of taking Lamia, but we'll see. His army is hurt after defeating Kalida, after all. Alrighty, well, that is all good. Kroki, you're still holding on to your points. Somebody asked me in the comments why I'm holding on to uh, the points and not leveling them up. Though we will, I guess, take the Blessing of Quetzal. Because it has to be Blessing of Quetzal for Croc with his Soros. I mean, it's basically Quetzal or Itzel for him. And Itzel is... Hmm. It's basically all the dinos. So the really expensive units anyway. But the leadership is kind of meh. And no, it, it just it just feels like you should like from a loreful perspective, it just feels like you that Krokgar is indeed a blessed by Quetzal. On the other hand, though, he did get Grimlock, which is a special carnosaur, so you could say he's blessed by Itzel as well, damn it. <laughs> Alright, I gotta hold off on this. Either way, we're holding on to the points because uh, we need to instantly acquire this and then one of these things and then neutralize chaos at level 12 which is the idea behind not spending them right now because obviously this is the uh, uh, this is a pretty darn strong buff granted we don't get too much value out of the melee attack and ward save yet but the devastating flanker is such a good buff the earlier we get it the better but we can't get a third fire leech bola but i'm not really willing to cancel anything building wise all right, Serpent Coast, you need defenses. Yeah, everything that's on the coast is going to need defenses regardless of the fact that they may never get attacked, but who knows? Somebody's going to sail up here somewhere and annoy us. Nonetheless, we're going to save the money because we want to get the Ancient Harbor and the Croxagore Labor District. And we got more stuff to build next turn as well. You, yeah, you're going to need an upgrade. All right, we can't be overspending now. Either way, I believe that's an end turn, so end turn we go. And we march on Libaras. Oh, well, 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 Vashnar. What you doing over there? Uh, you want a defensive lines? No. Not yet. Later, buddy. Don't you worry. Uh, Vashnar, you're making me nervous. Vashnar con Vashnar's Conquest would also be ma making me nervous because Vashnar's Conquest is one of the best rogue armies, but uh, this Vashnar is uncomfortably close to a territory that we just took. And he's in raiding, unless I'm mistaken. You know, we're probably going to declare war on him anyway. Maybe this is the time. Alright, what do we have here? Nothing new. And oh, he's actually in March Dance, not in Raiding. Hmm, he does have a decent force, though. Crocky can reach him right here, but then we'd have to not attack Libaras for a turn. But if he attacks Resetra, we'll have to move back here and deal with him anyway. Are you at war with him right now? You are. You're going to like us if we do this. You're gonna like us quite a bit. First for battle. Hmm. Are you at war with the Exiles, incidentally? You are not. You are at war with the Drakenhof Conclave, the Followers of Nagash, oh nice, and the Court of Libaras. I'm willing to bet that if we declare war on either one of these, you know what? We'll declare war on the Followers of Nagash. Why? Everybody hates Arkhan. Uh, let's uh, get non-aggression pact with you and trade agreement and money. This'll work. Arcan will probably eventually declare war on us anyway, so there's no point in not doing this. And there we go. Now our friendship is rising. We just got to keep an eye on this. If Talakwa manages to lose most of its armies, we can confederate them. Which would be just swell. I want Tic-Tac-Toe as fast as possible with his Air Force, where we can use lots and lots of Fire Leech Bolas, but also Ripperdactyls and regular Pterodons and Coatl and whatnot. Anyway... Uh, Crocky, I guess you're gonna do this, which means we're gonna talk to you and you join I'm war busy. against the Exiles of Corn right now. No it does mean that we need to be careful about the Golden Tower. We'll probably have to either get a new lord there or send one of our old lords back specifically to deal with this, as they'll probably march down. Granted, this is Drakenhof Conclave, but considering the fact that they moved around like that, they're probably just as willing to go all the way around like that. All right. Eh, at least he'll give us some money. Which also means a Vashnar is done for. Uh, but we also got enough money to upgrade what we wanted to upgrade here, here. Uh, Cursed Jungle. Straight up upgrade faction wide of Skinks, which is good as well. But the Temple of Skulls will give us the Hothouse Hatchery, more growth, as well as the potential to build an Old Ones Monument. 
Are we yet able to upgrade the Temple of Gold? Yeah, we are, but 4k is pretty intense. Golden Tower, we're still waiting on you. And it's gonna probably take some time. But at least it has a good garrison as it currently is. Yeah, let's start with the Cursed Jungle, I think. Mostly because we can build a Skink Favela here, but also to get the Lotus Gathering Camp. Although, the 1% probably isn't gonna be that crazy of a difference anyway. Hmm, nonetheless. And do that, and then we will... I guess we can build just the level 1 of the Skink Foraging Camp. There we go, that's all our cash. Kroki, and you. Thanos here. Leech some XP. I guess all of you could leech some XP. Wait. Maybe one of you should stay at Doomblade just in case, but what's the likelihood that everybody, anybody can actually reach? We should probably just leech the XP with everybody. Leech. Leech. I think we could just auto-resolve this one, though. I know it's a coronate battle, but this is garbage. Actually, hmm, we are kind of hurt, though. We could reduce casualties by actually fighting it. Maybe we just fight it. Alright, you know what? Screw it, we'll fight it. Maybe that'll level us up to... Well, it'll level us up to level 11, most likely. Not 12. Anyway, Teto Echo, our... Our... Uh, hero... Oh, ooh, Agility of the Lizard is available. Nah, but it's not really needed right now. Wait, I just want to see what else is available. Protection of the Old Ones, Ambush Defense Chance for Army. This will be very helpful against the Skaven, mind you but isn't super needed right now. We could also, now that we have these maxed out, start going through scouting to get more magical items, which I've just convinced myself. Alrighty, you are saving your points to get Scorn, no, your Sacred Adornments, in to commence the Massacre and Revered Leader. As soon as we have those cheap source, we're getting piles and piles of them. And here we go. Alright, I know that this is very much auto-resolvable, but we'll do a quick cinematic battle to end off this episode, just because it's our first fight against the forces of Korn. And by the looks of it, it'll be on a bright map, and we'll, and we'll be able to see all the glorious slaughter. And even Korn would appreciate that. Alrighty, here we go. Fire Leech Bola's debut. I can't wait to start using these guys. They're just so darn fun. But the first blood will be drawn by, well, arguably the enemy, or at least the first move will be made by the enemy. I'm not sure by first blood because we do cause them to bleed even as they're summoned. And they summoned in a pretty bad place right in the middle of our main line of units. We, of course, Vanguard deployed our chameleon skinks and stalkers forward. They're going to move back and annoy the enemy Chaos Furies as they withdraw towards our lines, and of course once the Chaos Furies are done for, we can switch towards the Marauders of Corn. The main reason to target the Furies are so that they don't target our Fire Leech Bolas, who are instead going to loop around and go for the main enemy Corn host, mostly because those other units don't have any kind of air defenses. Alrighty, there we go, smashy smashy, the Blessed Kroxy is ripping the blood letters apart with the help of a few of our big boys here. And it looks like we're getting some shots off into those Furies who are just about to land. That's just fine though, because it allows the Chameleon Stalkers to charge forward and obliterate them. And as soon as they're done, our Chameleon Skinks can then move around unhurried. The other unit appears to have actually landed in our own massive pile of uh, our massive main line here which was a terrible move by the enemy. They have wasted all of their furies, which means our Fire Leech Bolas have free reign to start annihilating their army. There we go. Now look at all that splash damage coming down. And keep getting those shots off. We also do have bombs available on these guys, which we will use in a second here. And drop those bombs, do more damage, and then keep up the splash hits from your Fire Leech Bolas. Very, very nice. And on top of that, we've got our Chameleon Skinks who are now going to move into the side of these units, but it does look like both of these Marauders of Corn are pretty much dead, and frankly, the Bloodletters aren't in much better way either. The enemy Cultist did charge forward, but Krokgar and Pradot both took care of him fairly easily, and similarly over here, the enemy Chaos Lord of Corn got surrounded and killed by our Cold One Spears, our Feral Steg, and our... Uh, our Blessed Croxies, and I'm sure that the Blessed Source Warriors helped out quite a bit as well. A few more Fire Leech Bolas hits, and then we can move in with the rest of our units. 
And there we go, right in the thick of things with all that extra splash damage. Looks like the blood letters are melting away. I did say that this would be a very quick battle, as the enemy stood absolutely no chance. Uh, but I just really wanted to see the Fire Leech Bolas get to work. And the Chameleon Skinks too, who are also running around doing their thing. We'll Gotta be careful not to explode too many of our own with those Fire Leech Bolas shots. Alrighty, and with that, the battle is over, the enemy shatters, and we just have to wait for the last of those poor units of bloodletters to melt away. You got summoned to the wrong place, guys. And those poor marauders now just trying to escape all while getting shot down by those blow darts. Beautiful. There we go. A lovely little fight, uh, just a little bit of a preview for our future corn fights. We, I'm sure, have a lot of them in our, uh, uh, well, probably not the next episode as we'll be dealing with other stuff, but in the next few episodes as we head out towards them. Especially to see them off before they start moving towards us directly, as it is always better to take the initiative. Alrighty, there we go. 23k and 12k damage on the two units of Fire Leech Bolas, doing more than anybody else. Always uh, worth adding, and uh, so much damage in such a quick battle as well. This is why I wanted a third, and we're probably going to get a third one. Anyway, at least until we... Uh uh, until we swap out a bunch of units and get shielded source, but the skinks are doing pretty good now. And we are also going to... Ooh, money or healing. Both valuable. But we are in our own territory and we need lots of money. So we're gonna take the... Uh, we're gonna take the captives once again. And there we go, enemy is killed in battle. We got... Hey, we got a Lichbone Pennant as well. Always a nice pickup. And more, I more item... Oh, hello, Tedo Echo's got a Hibernation Attendant for more casualty replenishment. Very nice. Very, very nice. We got some great item pickups and other stuff in this particular episode. We'll have to swap some of these around. Crocky's probably going to get the Sword of Strife. And we'll see about the other stuff. But we're going to have to see about it next time. We got plenty of varieties in this episode, so I'd like to think that this is a good place to end it. And we're out of time as well. Ali Baras will be the target for next episode. And then on to Lamia for further variety by fighting the dead. And then I guess we start attacking Clan Moors. I mean, certainly we can push through Karak and then move out to head off the exiles as well. We'll have to think about it. it. Depends on if we want to separate the armies, as in give Chameleon or Kanos Kir a full stack of the remnants of uh, uh, of the Skink forces and maybe add a few things in there and then split him off, or we could just use him to hold Lamia while we take care of the exiles. It really depends on where we go. Until Kairos is identified, we have plenty of stuff to do up here. And when he is identified, we're going to immediately have to turn basically all our strength to uh, attacking him and destroying him before he can do anything because his abilities are just too annoying. But anyway, I digress. Stay tuned for more lizards. Don't forget to leave a like and comment. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.